Hello everyone, welcome you all. My name is Pawan. So in this video, I'm going to explain about uh, Python classes and uh, Python objects. Now let us see what is a class and a object. Now class is a logical entity which contains a logic. Class is a logical entity which contains a logic and the class contains variables and methods. So the normally the logic will be included in the methods and additionally we can also create variables within the class and uh, an object is a physical entity which is created for a class an object is a physical entity which is created for a class and we can create any number of objects for a class we can create any number of objects for a class and in other words we can say a class is a blueprint of an object a class is a blueprint of object so for example what is a blueprint here Suppose if you want to construct a house, we will have some blueprint, right? This is some plan. So this is a blueprint and this will not occupy any memory location. This is just like a structure or a blueprint. By using this, we can construct the building. So based upon the plan, if I construct the building, right? So this is a physical entity and it will occupy a certain number of space here. Similarly, a class is a blueprint. That means it contains some logic methods and everything, but it doesn't occupy any memory space. And once we created an object for that particular class and then it will occupy the memory. So what is a class? Class is a collection of methods and variables. Class contains methods and also variables. And if you want to access those variables and methods, we have to create an object for that particular class and then we can use it. Right. Now let us see different ways of creating uh, classes, how we can specify the variables, how we can define the methods within the class and how we can access them. So these things we have to see now. Now let's start with this. So we will see a few examples one by one. So let's start with how to create a basic class and object which include methods. Now I'll show you practically how we can create a basic class and also we'll create a few methods within the class and then we will access those methods using an object. Now let me open PyCharm. So here I'm just creating a new Python file. So I will name it as a classes demo now. Okay, so now I have just created a Python file. So now let me define a class here. So how to declare a class? So we can declare a class like this class and then class name and colon. So here we can write a method. So for the first method, I will write like div. So my function, right? So here, and uh, self is a basically is a keyword which says like this function is belongs to this particular class. Now here, if I don't want to write any uh, body in this particular method, we can just use a task keyword. So it will just omit the uh, body of this method. And then I can also create one more method. Let's say div display. And here, okay, this method is also belongs to my class, but additionally, I want to pass some parameter to this method. Okay, so we can just say comma name. So some parameter I will pass later. Now the same parameter, I will just print it here. So here I'll just say name is, right? Now comma name, I just print that name. So this is a, a basic class which I have defined with one two methods. One is my function and the other one is display function. So my function, by default, every function uh, or every function or method within the class will take a self keyword. So what is self means is this particular function or this particular method will belongs to this particular class. So here we need to understand uh, two terminologies very important. So one is function. Okay, the other terminology we have is a method. So here there is small difference between function and method in Python. So technically, both are same, but uh, logically there is small theoretically there is small difference between function and, and method. So, for example, if you go for uh, C language and C++ language, there we have a functions because there we don't support the classes. In especially for C language, we don't support any classes, right? So there we will create some function and we can call that function any number of times. So function is nothing but a piece of code which we can. Uh, reuse that function or whenever we need a function we can just make a call and uh, get job done that is a function purely function 
but when you come to the java right in java the basic thing is a class so without a class we cannot write anything so where we have to write these functions in java we must write these functions within the class itself so in that context we call them as a methods so to differentiate these two we have to use a function is a name and method is a name in c and other other structural programming languages we call that as a function so without class if i define a a piece of code that's called as a function and if i create the same function within the class that is called as a method so in java without class we cannot create function anywhere so we must create a class and within the class we have to include the function so in that context we call as a method but in come to the python python will support both we can create functions we can also create method so technically there is no difference between function and method if i create this function within the class is called as a method and the same function if i create outside of the class is called as a function pure function so there's a basic difference between function and method so just remember this so function and method so when i see when i create a function within the class is called as a method a function if i create outside of the class right so that is called as a, a pure function not a method all right now let's see this so here i have just created a function a class called my class which contains say two methods one is my function and display now once we created this class how we can uh, use this class right so if you want to use this class we must create an object so through object only we can call these functions and one more important thing every function by default or every method in the class by default will take uh, one keyword called as a self so self is representing these methods or belongs to this particular class and the first method is not taking any parameters so self will be treated like a keyword which says like this function or method is belongs to this particular class but in the second method along with the yes self i have also passed one more parameter called as a name so this will be considered as a parameter now if i want to access this particular class i have to create an object how to create an object in python is very simple let us say my class and bracket and then store that into a variable as a mc now this mc is a reference variable and my class is an exact object whenever i say my class it will create a memory location that memory location will be identified or referring by this mc okay so this is called as object and uh, this is object reference variable so by using this variable i can access those methods let's say mc dot my function mc dot my function so here mc is an object my function is a a method which is created under class all right so now we have done this so i think method name is wrong oh my func is correct let me verify mc is equal to my class and just i am taking this my function and calling it here right so and then i need to also call display method here i will just call the display method and there is something wrong here and uh, print function right and uh, i have used name comma name all right okay so here a small indentation error so we have to start uh, from here so mc is a object reference variable and then my class so here i will just call that function let's say mc dot uh, my function right the first function is not taking any parameters and also we haven't specified any body for this so it doesn't return anything and then i will also call display function by using this object mc dot right so mc dot display mc dot display and this function will return uh, will take some parameter called as a name right we can just pass that value let me pass something called as a spot now let's run this code and this will give you name is spot so this is a output of this particular function or this particular this is a calling method okay so the my function is also called but inside this we haven't written anything so it doesn't it doesn't return anything here all right so this is how we need to create a basic class which contains uh, methods one method will not take any parameter the other method is taking some parameter and then i have created an object for this class and then i have called those methods so this is a basic example of uh, creating a class 
which contains a few methods and how to create an object and how to call those functions all right now let's move on to the next one so instance method and static methods so within the class we can create uh, two types of uh, methods the one is called as instance method and the other one is called a static method now let us see what is the difference between instance method and a static method let's go here let's say remove here i will create a new class now so here i am going to demonstrate instance method and static method instant method and static method now let us see what is instance method what is static method so here i will just create a new class called as a my class all right and then within the class i will create a function called def let me just give as a m1 is my function name self as a keyword and then here i will just print uh, some value so here this is called as a instance function instance method so what is instance method is when i create a method within the class by default that is a instance method when i create a class when i create a method within the class by default this is a instance method by default it is a instance method so this is instance method by default it is a instance method so if you want to call this function or if you want to call this method we must create an object and through that object we can call this function or call this method now i will create one more method which is a static method so similarly definition is same again so def i'll create one more method m2 all right so here m2 is a method and this is also belongs to the same class right so here i will just write a method a uh, message called print right so this is your static method this is your static method this is your static method now observe this so i have created two functions or two methods both are seems very similar right but if you want to make this method as a static method we must specify uh one uh, modifier let's say at the rate static method so this is a static method so this is a, a parameter which we need to add this is the keyword which we need to add before starting the function or method so this becomes a static method now so this is a, a static method now there is a difference between calling those methods so now i have created one class which contains a stat, uh, instance method and also i have one more that is called a uh, static method right now let's call those functions now. come back so let's create an object for this let's say my class my class and uh, i'll store that into an object let's say mc is equal to now using this mc right so i can just call m1 function directly so this is a instance method when i call this it will just print the output like a instance method so it is giving this output but now how we can call this a uh, static function or static method so static methods we can directly call by using class name we no need to create any object but in java we have static methods static variables but here we have only static methods we don't have static variables so here once we created an object through object we can just call the methods which are instance methods but uh, when i say a method is a static method so those methods we can directly call by using a class name right now let me call that so let's say my class name is a my class right so my class dot the function name is or method name is empty right so this is how we need to just call it now when i run this code this will give you an error so why it is giving an error here is m2 missing one required positional argument self so by default the static method doesn't take any parameter okay static method doesn't take any parameter so when i run this code so you will get this message instance method or static method we create see this carefully the first method is a instance method the second method is a static method and instance method means we must specify the self keyword so this is belongs to this particular class even m2 is also belongs to the my class but static method we should not specify any uh, self keyword here okay so for example so for example when i say self here what happens so now i have provided self what happens so when i say self here just like other methods 
it will throw some error right what kind of error it is throwing m2 missing one required positional argument self what does that mean is in static method if when i say self here that will be treated as a normal variable or argument okay so this self is different than this one so in the normal method when i say self that means this method is belongs to this particular class but in case of static method when i say self here that will be an argument so when i call this m2 function or method we must pass some value here okay we must some value so suppose I'm, i'll say some 10 here. now i'm passing some value to this and now when i run this code it will exactly print the same thing so what we understood based on this is in a normal function or normal method if i say self that method is belongs to the class especially for static methods don't take any parameters here not even self keyword but when i say self keyword here that method or that self keyword will be treated as a argument so we must pass some argument when i call this m2 function or m2 method okay so this is the basic difference between instance method and the static method so how we can create a static method we just say at the rate static method so keyword before defining the method so that method will become the static methods and these static methods can be directly called by using class all right so this is a basic example for instance method the static methods instance method static method so instance method we can call call by using an object static methods we can call directly by using a class so that is a concept of uh, instance method and static method all right now let us see so we also seen a static method with parameter right when i say when i pass some parameter here this will be received here and right so we can also print this value here so instead of printing static method the message here i can just print the self but that will be treated as a argument right so we can directly print here now when i run this code so this will print you value 10 so static methods we can also pass some parameter but here we don't use self keyword for static methods remember this all right now let's move on to the next one so we have seen static method with parameters also and then we'll see declaring variables inside the class declaring variables inside the class so far in the first three examples we declared only methods within the class we declared methods within the class and uh, now i'm going to show you how to declare the variables within the class so in the beginning i told you class is a collection of methods as well as variables right so far we have seen how to define the methods but now i'm going to show you how to declare the variables within the class now go to pycharm now let me remove that now i'm going to show you how to declare variable inside the class how to declare the variables inside the class so now i'm creating a new class called again my class all right so here directly i can specify the variable let's say a comma b 100 comma 200 a comma b equal to 10 comma 20 or 100 comma 200 so these are class variables because we created these variables within the class okay and then along with these variables i will also create uh, two functions two methods let's say diff add method okay so add method so this is a normal method instance method so self should be there and then here i will just add these two values okay observe this i am going to add these two values observe this carefully here i'm just say a uh, print okay i'll print so what is these variables these variables are the class variables remember this these are all the class variables these are all class variables so if you want to access this class variables right so we should use a self keyword so directly you cannot access let's say self dot a all right plus self dot b so this is how we need to access the class variables so class variables we can access by using a self keyword okay so if i use self keyword within the method that method is belongs to this class when i use uh, even if you want to access this class variables we have to use a self keyword so self dot a uh will read the value from a and self dot b representing the 200 all right and similarly i will also create uh, one more function or one more method def multiplication and this is also belongs to same class here i will access again uh, same variables 
let us say self dot uh, a and uh, star and uh, self dot b all right now this will print multiplication right so now let us call those functions one by one so how to call these functions or how to call these methods so we have to create an object for this class right so now i'm going to create an object for this my class so here i'll just say mc is equal to my class now by using this object i can access these two methods now let us try to access let's say mc dot add so we no need to pass any parameters right so mc dot again a multiplication now what happens we just created an object for uh, my class and then i have called add method and multiplication so internally this method will read the values from a comma b so this is how we have to read class variables by using self keyword now let's run this code and then it will give you so a plus b 100 plus 200 is 300 and uh, a star b is a uh, 20000 all right so this is how we need to uh, declare variables inside the class and uh, self is a keyword self dot a self dot b is representing exactly class variables representing the class variables right now we have a uh, three different type of variables actually so we have local variables we have class variables and we have global variables now in the next example i'll show you I will define local variables and class variables and global variables all types of variables and then I will show you how we can access those variables but in this example I just shown you class variables and class variables we can access by using self keyword all right now let's move on to the next example so local variables class variables global variables we have three types of variables what is local variable local variable means whatever variables we created within the method right within the method is called as a local variable and whatever variables we created inside the class are called as a class variables and whatever variables we created outside of the class are called global variables okay normally what is a class here class is class we have so in this class we have uh, this is a within the class right so this is said this is a method this is your class this is your method okay and where this class is present within the file within the file it is present right so when i create a variable within the method suppose here that will be local variable can be accessed only within this method and when i create a variable here that is a class variable so this can be accessed by using self keyword when i create a variable here that means outside of the class will be global variable this is our global variable all right now i'll show you an example for local variables class variables and the global variable how we can define them and how we can access them now let's go to practical part so here i'm going to show you local variables class variables and the global variables let us see an example here. so first of all what i can do is i will just uh, create a first i will create a uh, class here okay class my function class uh, my function sorry this is a class right so my class let's say my class class my class colon right so here within the class if i create a variables like this let us say uh, a comma b and is equal to 10 comma 20 so within the class i am creating so these are called as a class variables these are called class variables right so out of the class suppose here if i create variables let's say i comma j right and here i say 15 comma 25 so here if i create a variables outside of the class called as a global variables these are called as a global variables. so global variables means we have created outside of the class before class is started and after the class started within the class we created two more variables called as a class variables right now i will create a function here or method here so diff diff add function or method so here self is a keyword which says this method is belongs to this class and then i will also create uh, two parameters here let's say x comma y right so here these x comma y called as a local variables because these are all defined within the method so here x and y are called as local variables local variables now come to this method 
So let's implement this method here within this method. I will access uh, local variables I'll access class variables and also I'll try to access global variables now let us see how we can access uh, different type of variables within the method now first uh, when I say here print uh, x plus y print x plus y so if I say x plus y directly so this will representing the local variables directly representing the local variables here we are accessing local variables so here we are accessing local variables x and y are local variables now here within the method I want to access class variables I want to access class variables now I can act how we can access class variables we have seen in the previous example we have to use self keyword right so if you want to access a class variable we must sell we must specify self dot x and plus self dot y sorry we have a and b right so a and here this is b so a and b are class variables so how we can access the class variables within the method by specifying self keyword so here we are accessing class variables we are accessing class variables now how we can access the global variables how we can access the global variables so if you want to access the global variable we directly can access like this let's say print i plus g print i plus g so that means we are can directly access the global variables anywhere so global in the sense they are not belongs to either class or method anywhere it belongs to everywhere so we can directly access the global variables now observe this carefully if i create variables outside of the class called as a global variables when I create variables within the class are called as a class variables when I create a variables within the method are called as a local variables so local variables directly we can ask x plus y so these are x plus y representing the local variable and uh, we can directly use this variable and uh, a and b are class level variables class variables so class variables we have to refer by using self keyword and the global variables we can directly use it directly we can access it right so now if I want to call this method we must create an object for my class right so let me create uh, an object for my class and uh, let's create an object as mc is equal to my class now I will call that method mc dot add mc dot add so two parameters we need to pass right add method will take two parameters x1 z right so here I will pass 100 and 200 now what could be the output so 100 and 200 will be go and uh, store in x and y first it will give you x and y so here it will give you 300 as an output and then self a dot self dot b so self a means uh, self b means it is a class level variable sorry self means uh, class level variables 10 and 20 so 10 plus 20 so this will returns 30 this will returns 30 now print i plus j so i and j are the global variables so 15 plus 25 it will give you 40 okay so this will give you 40. so this is how we need to access global variables class variables and method so there are three different local variables global variables class variables and the local variables now when I run this code see now 300 30 and 40 got it so global variables class variables and local variables so how to access them local variables directly we can access by you specifying variable names class variables we can access by using self keyword global variables we can directly access by specifying the variable names. okay now I'll show you one more example suppose when I use same variable names for global variables class variables and local variables what happens how we can access them here I have used different names for local variables are i and j class variables are a and b and local variables are x and y but now what I can do is I will just create same variable names here I will use a b and here also I will use a b and here also I will use a b and then how we can access those variables now we'll see in the next example I will create one more example now so this is also example for local variables class variables and global variables but with the same name with the same name now let's go to PyCharm once again now 
here i will create the same class one more time so again before that i will create global variables let's say a comma b is equal to let's say okay so here i'll just say again same 15 comma 25 same but here this time i'm using same uh, names for those variables now here i will create a class class my class and inside the class again i will define the class variables so how we can define the class variables a comma b same variables i am using okay same names i am using so here again uh, values of can be different 10 comma 20 now within the same class i will create a method so def add method again so self comma it will also take a two parameters two arguments those arguments also i will create as a b a b same names i have used now within this let's try to print here so first i will print some of the local variables a plus b and then i want to print uh, some of uh, class variables how to access the class variables again print we have to use a self keyword right self dot a plus self dot b so this is able to access the class variable if i don't say self again a b will be treated as a local variables right so here these are uh, global variables global variables and these are all uh, class variables sorry this is a comment right so this is a class variables and uh, these are class variables and here a b or uh, method local variables here a b are local variables a b are the local variables now when i run this code it will give you exact output here now because we haven't created an object or we haven't called this method right perfectly fine so here i have just created two global variables a and b and local class variables also a and b and method variables local variables also a and b now when i say a plus b here directly it will be accessing the local variables so this statement will access local variables this statement will access local variables so class variables how we can access here by using self keyword so when i say self this will access class variable till now everything is fine now observe this if you want to access the global variables we can directly access right so when i write statement like this print a plus b observe this carefully i have printed a plus b so here i am trying to access the global variables in the previous example also when i accessing the global variables i directly access them without specifying any keywords right but here the conflict will come when i say here a plus b a and b will be treated as a local variables but here a plus b again it will be treated as a local variables right but if uh, local variables and global variable names are exactly the same then how we can differentiate these two so a b means this will be considered as a local variables but how we can how we can differentiate these local variables and the global variables so here we have to specially say one more keyword called as a globals 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 of globals of globals of and this a we have to put in the square bracket like this and single quotations similarly here also we need to use the same function called as a globals and then we have to put this b in the single quotations like this okay this is additional notation we have to follow if global variables or local variable names are exactly the same we have to follow this one suppose if we have a different names directly we can access the global variables okay here a b is there and global variable is xz xy then you can directly specify xy here without creating any global keyword but if your local variable names or global variable names are exactly the same then you have to separate them differentiate them by using global keyword this is our syntax now this will able to access global variables global variables all right now when i call this functions or methods when i call this one method which contains multiple print statement, statement print statement right? so then i need to create an object let me just create an object let's say my class i'll store let's say an object called as mc so by using mc dot I can call add function so here we need to pass two parameters so i will pass 100 comma 200 right now let's run this code now you can see so 100 and 200 will go and store in a b 
and it produces a 300 first. So the output of this is 300. Perfectly right. And then self dot a dot self dot b. Self means class variables. So a and b. 10 plus 20, 30 as written. So this is also perfectly right. And then we are able to access the global variables here. 15 plus 25. So this returns a 40. So perfectly right. Okay. So this is how we need to access global variables, class variables, and local variables in different ways. If variable names are different, we have to go one approach. If the names are different, uh, names are same, we have to go some approach. But even though if the names are same, so accessing the local variables, accessing the class variables, again, same approach. But only the difference will be coming only with the global variables. Okay. If the local variables and global variables exactly the same, we have to differentiate them by using global schema. Okay. So that is all about global variables class variables and then local variables all right now so normally in the beginner uh, the beginning i told you one class can have multiple objects we can create multiple objects for the single class right so now we'll see that so creating multiple object for one class now what i can do is i'll just remove this go to pycharm so let me remove this. So I will just create a, a class. Let's say my class name is again my class. And in this class, I will create a method. So let's say def display and uh, this will take self and self says this method is belongs to my class. So in this method, I will just write a simple print statement. Let us say this is or we can just say good morning. Okay, some message I have created. So this is my class. So for this class, I can create multiple objects. So how we can create here? Let's say my class. So my class. So this itself is an object. Okay, and we can create one variable which will refer to this particular class. Let us say object one is equal to my class. Similarly, I can also create multiple objects. Let me create one more object. Let's say object two here. Right now. I have created two objects now. So by using this first object obj1, I call this display method. Right. And similarly, by using object2, I call uh, again same method. So both objects are different. Whenever I created objects, it will occupy different memory locations. So memory locations of these two objects are completely different. Okay, because these are the physical entities. Now, when I run this code, you will get two times because Two times we have called this method by using two different uh, objects all right so here we have created multiple objects for a single class we have created multiple object for a single class so we can create any number of object as soon as I created an object as soon as I created an object for the support this is a class so for this class multiple objects can be created so every object will be occupied different memory locations like this. Every object is independent. And we can also easily find out what is a memory location by using ID function in Python. So I will show you in the next example. So now let's run this code and uh, it will give you exactly two messages because we created multiple methods or so multiple object for a single class, right? Now, so we'll see that named object and nameless object so when i creating objects there are two types of objects one is named object nameless object so what is the difference between named object and nameless object what is the difference between named object and a nameless object it's very simple so when i say when i create an object okay with this some name here okay with uh, this object is referring by a name this is called as a reference variable reference variable this is called as a named object this is called as a name object. So this object is referring by using a name. So this is called as a named object. Suppose if I don't create a, uh, I will create an object, but we don't specify any name here. Let us say this is actually object. My class, this is actually an object. So here I haven't specified any name, right? And directly I can call this method called display method. So if I don't create any reference variable for that particular object, that is called as a nameless object. We have this concept is there in Java also. This is called as a nameless object. Okay. So when I create an object, 
if i refer that object by using a reference name called as a named object and when i create an object if i don't specify any reference variable for that is called as a nameless object and here we can directly call this method by using nameless object without creating a reference variable so this is a basic difference between named object and nameless object right now finally we'll see how to check memory locations of the object as i said before for every class we can create multiple objects and every object will be stored in multiple memory locations right so how we can find those locations for those objects now let us see one more example so here i'm going to show you that example how to check the memory locations of the objects how to check the memory locations of the objects let us see here so first here i will just create a one class if you want to create a multiple object we should at least we should have one class class let's say my class colon here i will create one method let's say def right so m1 so self is a keyboard which represents m1 is belongs to my class and inside this method i am not going to write anything just i'll just pass it and it will just omit the body of the method now i will create multiple objects for this particular class let us say c1 is my first object just say my class okay this is the first object similarly i will also create uh, two different objects c1 and c2 and uh, only i will create only two objects and what i can do is i will create one more object c3 reference variable and i'll store c1 into c3 c1 itself is an object reference variable right the same object i will store into some other variable so c3 also becomes a one more object okay c1 c2 and c3 now let us see the memory locations where these objects c1 c2 c3 will be stored so if you want to see the locations right we have a function python function called as id function so how we can use it is id of c1 id of c1 c1 is an object object reference variable so this will return the location of c1 so if you want to print this we can just use a print command print id of c1 similarly i will find out the location of other objects let us say c2 and also c3 all right so now let's run this code see now the first one is written this one this is the value memory location second thing uh, second object it returns this location and the third object is returns so this location now if you observe care carefully c1 is this one this is the location where c1 is stored and c2 is stored in this location in the third point here what i have done is c1 again stored into c3 so that means c1 and c3 will point to the same location will point to the same location now if you observe this c1 and c3 will point to the same location because c1 is initiated into c3 also so both reference variables are pointing to the same object same object okay now if you want to see if you want to check for for example c1 is c2 or equal or not or c2 or c3 are same or not whether they are pointing to the same location or not okay if you want to verify that we have uh, one more uh, keyword called is and is not so we can use like this suppose uh, i'll just print uh, c1 is c2 c1 is c2 so what it means is c1 c2 are completely different locations right c1 is not c2 actually c1 is having different location c2 is a different location so when i say c1 is c2 that means it returns uh, should false it returns should false okay it returns false so because c1 c2 are not exactly the same location not pointing to the same location so both are different objects suppose when i say c1 and c3 c1 is c3 yes c1 is c3 and this should return true so when i run this it should returns true perfectly right and opposite of this suppose we have also so so we also have a is not so how we can use is not for example i am using the same thing with the is not this is a completely opposite of this so here what i am saying c1 is not c2 so c1 is not c2 right so it should returns true and c1 is not c3 but c1 is the c3 is true but c1 is not c3 means it should return false it should return false 
it will show between false right now when i run this code you will give you false to true false this is a completely opposite so this is a function id is a function which will return the memory location where the object is stored okay so these are all a few concepts which are related to classes and objects in python so we will discuss the rest of the items again we'll continue this in the second video so that's all for uh, this video so thank you all please subscribe my channel to get more updates on this thank you all